Which leads us to our next question, and that is, how can I be fruitful? How can I bear fruit? How can I fulfill this command that Jesus gave us? Okay, come on, how do I produce fruit? Well, if you look at the passage, we see, really see two phases to this fruit production. If he, uh, John chapter 15, verse 1, once again, I'm the vine, Jesus says. My father is the vine dresser. I'm the vine, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Jesus is saying, look, as believers, as followers of Christ, we are here, we're left here to produce fruit. If we go through this life and don't produce any fruit, we're just taking up space and we're wasting time. Just like a, a, a vine dresser would cut off the vine, why not just bring us right to heaven? We're, we're just taking up space, we're dead weight. He says, you need to produce food, fruit because that's what vineyard, vine were made to do. The branches were designed, their purpose was to produce fruit. So he says this, and every branch that bears fruit, if you bear fruit, maybe it's just a little bit of fruit, maybe it's fruit every once in a while, every so often you bear fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Yikes. That doesn't sound like fun, does it? Because you know what pruning is, don't you? Pruning is cutting off, cutting back. And any vine dresser will tell you that if you're going to have a vineyard that's worth anything, there's a lot of pruning going on because you want those branches that are there the ones that are left to produce fruit, not just fruit, but much fruit. And so how is it that we go from bearing, uh, bearing a little fruit to more fruit, to much fruit? We have to be pruned. That means that God, the Holy Spirit, is inside us and he's working, he's moving, he's pruning so that we can bear fruit. The scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice. Put those things away from you. He says those are things that need to be brought out and cut off. Brought out and cut off. And you know what, what better way to do that than for all of us to be cooped up with our families and no escape for days and weeks and hours on end. You, you, usually you could, if things get hot, you can go and go to work or you can go to the gas station or you can go to the park, but we can't go to the park. We can't go to work. We can't go uh, shopping. And so, and so we're, we're, we're staying at home and we have to deal with this. And God says things need to be brought out so they can be cut off. It tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, But I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you, so that you may not do the things that you please. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousness, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. He says, here's a list. If that's, not good enough for, if that's not good enough for you, and things like these, just look around. There are all kinds of fruits of the flesh that need to be pruned, that need to be cut out, and they need to be exposed. But we are so busy oftentimes burying them back with the dirt, hiding them. But God says, no, I want to expose them. And I want you to allow me to prune, to cut those things out of your life so that you can be fruitful. And I know personally that it's easy to run. It's easy to, okay, there's tension here. There's a problem here. I can go and do something else. I can go do this. I can do things for the Lord. When sometimes God wants us to stop and say, okay, what are you trying to show me here? What is, what, what is that thing that's in me? that needs to be moved out of me, that you need to cut off so that I can be fruitful. Okay, this is the money part of the passage. This is where we get the answer to the question, how do I do what I was made to do? How do I bear fruit? And it all comes down to one word, and that word is abide, abide. 
50 times in John's gospel, he uses the word abide. 11 times in these few verses, in this chapter, he uses the word abide. Now, what does abide mean? Because Jesus says, abide in me. What does abide mean? Well, it means stay connected. Many of us have been abiding in our abode and it's been abysmal. We've been living in our house and it's been miserable. We're stuck there, we're abiding in our abode, right? But to abide means to stay in the middle of, stay connected to, just like a branch stays connected to the vine if the sap is gonna go through it and produce fruit. It's not the branch that produces the fruit, it's the sap coming from the vine, coming from Jesus, the love that comes through, from Jesus through us, can reach our brothers and sisters, can reach the world for Christ. So Jesus puts it this way, in John chapter 15, verse eight. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so that you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus is saying, you are, in the, you are the object of my love. No matter what you're going through, no matter what circumstance you're in, no matter whether uh, you're in the midst of losing your job, maybe uh, 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 reaching out to a neighbor, whatever circumstance you're in, remember that you're the object of God's love. Say, okay, where I'm at, this is in the midst of your love. I wanna abide in your love. Jesus is saying, abiding in me is like spiritual breathing. Here's what he says in verse seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Jesus is saying this. If you allow my words to penetrate your life, you stay connected with what I have said and allow it to penetrate your heart. In other words, each day, don't get far from God's, from, from God's word. He's trying to speak to you. Uh, memorize a verse a week. Get into uh, listening to God through the scripture. Don't be far from that because if your words are abiding in, in me, if you're allowing God's words to come in, into you, and then from there, if you're praying, if you're asking God, what is it you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to say it? That spiritual breathing is letting God's word come into you and then praying back to God. Letting his word comes in, into you and praying back to God. When you do that, you start to experience the love of Christ and the power of Christ and you will see the fruit of the spirit as it comes through you, as God uses you.